Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, July 6th. 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The floods continue in Sydney, but the big story, UAH satellite temperatures are in, and the temperature is getting colder. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, the temperatures may be dropping due to some of that aerosol from Hunga Tunga, but overall, in the last two years, two and a half years, temperatures have dropped from a high to its current position of over a half a degree C. Yes, 0.54 degrees C from the beginning of 2020 to the current reading. So definitely a cool down on planet Earth, a half a degree C. And well, that's quite significant. And then, well, the effects. Sun Road on pace for the historic late opening. They're trying to open Glacier National Park, where a few decades ago they said there would be no more snow there and all the glaciers would melt. It was back here when it was nice and high, but we're back to some 1980s temps and they're struggling to get the road open. Extreme challenges. The road may only be open just for a few weeks, maybe eight weeks, until it closes again. Now let's talk about some of the severe weather that happened yesterday. Tuesday storm brings 80 mile per hour winds and hail through much of the Dakotas. And look at the color. This derecho turned the skies green. And there's more severe weather expected for a wide area this week following Tuesday's plains derecho, which, as I said, turned the skies green. Now, the green color is created from light refraction within the thunderstorm. These thunderstorms had large amounts of hail. Hail is blue. When the sun sets in this region, it sets a wonderful reddish color, and red and blue make green. Like never. Like you've never seen. Well, I wish I could have rhymed that. But as a derecho moved through Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Tuesday evening, skies turned dark and an eerie shade of green lit the sky. And that's because of refraction, the blue hail up in the thunderstorm being recirculated, the red sunset, green skies. And it's in fact, goodness green. This looks like the sky in Sioux Falls right now. Take a look at this shot. Wow, that is a real greeny, emerald green. It looks like they used maybe a filter in there, you know? But because the road's green, everything's green. <laughs> but the severe storm threat and oppressive heat will continue for much of the central U.S., and we'll get to that, as fire, heat, and earthquakes are currently the epicenter of extreme weather, and that's in Alaska. Alaska's facing a record wildfire season. Well, not really. It's just the, the fastest growing wildfire season in the last three years, so it's not that big of a record. But there have been five earthquakes uh, in recent times in Alaska, so they're rumbling up there and they're burning. Now, Mississippi Valley heat wave, severe thunderstorms and flooding possible to the north. A dangerous summer heat wave will continue much of the plains. Not as hot as it's been in the past. We showed you back in the 1920s and 30s. It was literally 10 degrees hotter in all of these places across much of the country, not just in a localized area. So the fear mongering set aside, it will be warm because it's summer. Now, this dangerous quote unquote summer heat wave will continue. Much of the plains and mid-lower Mississippi Valley southeast today and Thursday. Areas of severe thunderstorms may occur today and again on Thursday for parts of the north-central Rockies and high plains. It rained again here, almost an inch. The road is blown out. We're now at a quarter of all the rain for a year in just two weeks here, and that is good news. The reason we moved here is because, based on my calculations of uh, paleo environment, it would get warmer and wetter here, and it's certainly doing both, and that's good news. Now, excessive rainfall over similar areas may bring flash flooding, and you could see the flash flooding areas here from Michigan into West Virginia, these areas under watch, uh, and there's heat warnings and watches in the orange and magenta, so heads up if you're in those counties. Now, let's take a quick look at where the severe weather can progress, and it doesn't look like much is happening, just some pop-up storms, hey, maybe, let's just... Slow that down. I just moved the screen, so let me fix that. Okay, and let's just run this through right here. You can see some pop-up storms here in northern Missouri, uh, probably in northeastern Colorado, and then throughout the mid-Atlantic. So it's going to be pretty unsettled in a straight line right through here for the next 12 hours. And then, yeah, northern Missouri looks like the big winter chicken dinner on that. And then we could see some uptick at, in Iowa, uh, tomorrow at Iowa and Indiana for some fierce storms Thursday and Friday. So heads up for you folks in the, mid, upper, <coughs> in the Midwest and the upper Midwest. 
And we're back. I had to close the slider. The roosters were getting a little feisty, just like the weather on Earth, as global temperatures dropped to near baseline, going back 40 years. And there's going to be very little talk from the mainstream about that topic. Now, Sydney floods worsen as 50,000 Australians are warned to evacuate or be ready to. And this is the cover photo that was on our last video. It's been making the rounds. But hundreds of homes have been inundated in and around Australia's largest city in a flood emergency that's causing trouble for about 50,000 people. Emergency response teams made 100 rescues overnight of people trapped in cars, flooded roads, or in inundated homes in the Sydney area, State Emergency Service Manager Ashley Sullivan said. Days of torrential rain have caused dams to overflow and waterways to break their banks bringing a fourth flood emergency in just 16 months to parts of the city of 5 million people. Evacuation orders and warnings to prepare to abandon homes were given to 50,000. And we'll keep you updated on the floods in Sydney as they progress. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We just had one pop off here up in Stanley, Idaho. That happens pretty normal up in that area of Horst and Graben. And we have some seismic activity uh, at Kilauea in Hawaii, another Recent earthquake 5.5 at the surface here in Chile, but nothing significant happening worldwide. As Iceland continues to rumble, the Reykjanes Peninsula pick, picking up steam in just the last four hours with a sequence of earthquakes. And you can see here off the peninsula on the Reykjanes Ridge, that subsurface volcano, in my opinion, is continuing to erupt spectacularly with the last earthquake at about 3.1 magnitude. So we'll keep a close eye on there. More activity over here at the Vatna Yokel, at Bartabunga, Astia, and even near Hekla right there. So Iceland, quite active. As, re as the rest of the world, almost nothing happening volcanically out of the ordinary, just normal volcanic activity. Even Chikarachki, which had a little eruptive episode, that ended at, just say that five times fast, it's pretty fun. Chikarachki, that's in Pashmir Island, in Russia, short-term eruptive period there has ended. Now, space weather news update. Not much going on on the desk. We got some actual real lar larger size sunspots actually moving around the limb there. And let's look at the latest HMI intensity because they have made their way much further than that, haven't they? Yeah, there they are. So we actually have a, a pretty significant spot system with a plage. And this active region could bring us some interesting space weather, weather because it's going to line up with our next prediction of a major activity up, uptick on the sun, which happens just about every two months. There's a cycle, and the next cycle uptick is going to be from 7.15 through the 18th will be a peak of solar wind speed uh, due to our calculations. So that means in the next 10 days. So just in a few days, maybe half a week, five days, this is going to be Earth-facing, and that's going to bring us up into that uptick time. So... Things are lining up for some interesting shots at the Earth. And we'll keep a close eye on that for you, so stay tuned for updates. Now watch this. A woman catches explosive lightning strike her husband's truck. It doesn't actually hit her husband's truck. It hits in front of it, and he drives through the bolt, and it almost reaches her car. It's pretty amazing. Let's bring it up. All right, keep your eye on the prize. I wouldn't have wanted to been a passenger in there, but it looks like it just missed him and passed by Dad. Pretty amazing footage there. All the links to all the articles we talk about will be below the video. Now, contact has been lost with NASA's capstone spacecraft flying a new path to the moon. This is going to... Wow. This is evidence for all the conspiracy theorists that said we never made it to the moon. We can't even make it to the moon with a small CubeSat? Come on. And we're going to send people there? you got to be kidding me. So... That is the latest update in NASA's amazing space program as we send people to the moon. Our small CubeSat that is the first to go up there to support the mission, well, has been lost. Never a straight answer. The Earth's magnetic poles probably aren't about to flip. This is coming out on mainstream news, NBC, and they are true. It's tr probably true. The poles aren't going to flip. They haven't flipped for about 750,000 years. But we are in a magnetic excursion, which is just as devastating as a pole flip, which they do not cover in this article. And the article is all based on a paper that recently came out that we will go over later tonight on Magnetic Reversal News for you guys. 
uh, that subscribe to both channels. Recurrent ancient geomagnetic field anomalies shedding light on future evolution of the South Atlantic anomaly. And basically what it says is we probably won't go into a, a field reversal on Earth. But it doesn't allude to the fact that we're in deeply falling off a cliff here as the magnetosphere is waning. And we'll get to all of that tonight on Magnetic Reversal News. So join us and read the paper and read the article and get up to speed. Now, the Large Hadron Collider was turned back on and more conspiracy theorists think that uh, we're going to create a black hole and everything's going to get sucked into it or we're going to jump into another timeline or, and so on and so forth. Now, all of this stuff is possible, but if you believe that, it doesn't matter because you also have to believe that you've lived infinite lives and there are infinite universes where there are infinite yous that will do everything eventually in infinite time. So, there's really nothing to worry about. The moment is all that matters now, so get a cup of coffee or go outside and take a walk, do a little Shinrin Yoku and kick your hat back and learn something. Learn a skill, learn how to grow food because this reality that we're in now, no matter if you want to be here or not, is the one that you're in. Now let's talk about some physics, whether it be science fiction or not. The Large Hadron Collider finds evidence of three never before seen particles, but they're not that fancy, they're just quarks. And it's kind of stupid when you read this. Uh, so, and let's see, where are the terms here? Let me just find it. Here it is. Three types of exotic particles. Not very exotic, which are two four-quark combinations. So that's just quarks, in my opinion. A four-quark is called a tetra-quark. Can you imagine that? And a five-quark unit is called a pentaquark. Wow. That cost a trillion dollars. And we'll leave you article, uh, we'll leave you links here to the actual update from CERN here. We have the Large Hadron Collider seminar on July 5th that you could join, which was yesterday, and a webcast that you can watch for this event. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually go see what these scientists are wasting your money on. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where people are starving and we're spending trillions of dollars to find out that a quark can be a pentaquark. Mmm, my stomach is full already. Subscribe if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. The world is a dystopian hole. But you don't have to become part of it.